chapter 7 verse number 12 we have to we have to now we saw that uh, verse 12 now we have to start with verse 13 and uh, here we are looking at uh, agnana khandana uh, that means uh, removing destroying uh, ignorance what do you mean by destroying ignorance ignorance means that that which is not yes this idea that there is something called ignorance that we are destroying <laughs> so let's look at the 13th verse last week just to that last paragraph for example the eyes can see everything else except themselves the means of knowledge pramana can illumine the object of knowledge all the colors and forms but they cannot see themselves the same pramana itself cannot be a prameya also and therefore the transaction of knowledge meaning the subject can only experience the object but the subject cannot experience the subject but when we bring the subject wean the subject away from the objects and as if put its attention to itself all over does not mean because the eyes don't have any color and form to see does not mean the eyes are not there because the eyes cannot see themselves doesn't mean that the eye is not there correct in a dark room pitch dark no objects are seen but you know the vision is still there the eyes are still there similarly in nirvikalpa samadhi no thoughts in the mind you know you are still there so you can't experience <clears throat> this habit of experiencing everything objectively the subject the i wants to experience the object the idam the aham wants to experience the idam and when we say this statement in our mind i want to know myself i want to know the the true i i want to experience the true i because that is equal to realization <clears throat> but that i is equal to true i it's a thought in the mind the i is a thought equal to is a thought true i is a thought and we keep so what are we doing in the mind mind only knows one thing subject object relationship so there we have made the truth the brahman the atman our own essence into an object of contemplation and therefore scripture say aprapya manasasa <clears throat> while this dialogue is going on even right now hmm 
Now there was silence for five, six seconds. You are still there. Each one of you is still there. There was no thought in your mind because you are so focused on listening and suddenly listening stopped because there was no <laughs> output coming from this side of the screen. <laughs> You're still there. And that is what is being... <clears throat> See, this is very, very subtle. <clears throat> and <clears throat> intellectual understanding is one thing, but to... To, un to for it to click that all your efforts, all your deliberations are only in the mind. And mind is incomplete knowledge. The one who knows that these deliberations are going on in the mind, that is true knowledge, that is complete knowledge. That is the witnessing consciousness. Be that that this I can only communicate, but you have to suss it out while listening right here and now. <clears throat> See. So the, the principle here given is the praman, the same pramana itself cannot be the prameya also and therefore the transaction of knowledge. The knower cannot become the known. The eyes are the knower of colors and form. They cannot become color and form. <laughs> the vision. The mind, the eye knows the thoughts, the idam. I cannot become the known. It cannot become an object of knowledge. And this is where the seekers make a mistake. They start in studying of the scriptures, whether this or Katopanishad or Shankar Bhashya and Bhagavad Gita. We take that knowledge as an object of knowledge. Knowledge is not an object of knowledge. Word knowledge, word knowledge which is given in the books, that is object of knowledge. But what is it, it is indicating? That is the true knowledge and that you are. In a sense, <clears throat> our attention must be not just the attention. We are of that nature of knowledge. Satchit, chit is knowledge. But we seek that self as a thought. S-E-L-F in the mind. That is where the problem is. Actually, it is not a problem also. Let the mind do its journey, go on its journey. Let it contemplate. But you be the one which is beyond the words, which is beyond the mind, beyond the thoughts. The one who is in whose presence everything is coming and going. You be that. When? Right here and now. Not one day. Oh, this is very good information. Let me collect it. No. To talk of ignorance existing and ignorance knowing itself is meaningless. To talk of mind existing itself and knowing itself is meaningless because it is foolishness. Mind can never come to know itself. Why? Because it's continuously fluctuating. Why? Because waking dream deep sleep, waking dream deep sleep. If that was not enough within the waking, thought after thought after thought after thought. Where is the constancy to know? From childhood to today, all the convictions have changed, all the notions have changed, all our conclusions have changed. And we say we are going to gain knowledge through mind. Then what about we did our engineering, we did our doctorate, we did, uh, you studied scriptures. We didn't study scriptures to remember scriptures. 
we studied scriptures to fall back into ourselves. You studied whatever profession you did for survival. I also did for survival. <laughs> it is ultimate one, not for earning a money. We earn, we learn a profession at the mental and uh, level by by hearting, remembering, uh, reproducing, so that we have a place in the society. We study the scriptures not to have a place in the society, to transcend the creation, not only society, to transcend the creation. See, this, this clarity must be there. Otherwise, we'll keep going in the loop in the mind. Oh, I know this, I know that, I've done this, I've done that. We know everything about everything, but uh, realization of nothing. Such people are called professors of philosophy. <clears throat> या लागी जरी अज्ञान करील आपुले ज्ञान हे म्हणत खेवो घेववी भीन मौन विरोधची देर फोर टू से इग्नोरन्स नोज इट सेल्फ ब्रिंग्स कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन एंड सो वील हॅव टू बी सायलंट वॉट इज इग्नोरन्स हिअर हाऊ इज इग्नोरन्स एक्सप्रेसिंग एज द माइंड What is mind? A play between aham thought and the idam thought. The I thought and the that thought. And this I thought, which I think I am, right now I'm thinking. This I thought wants to make the object as I thought of I. Not possible. Why thoughts themselves are expression of incomplete knowledge. They are limited, they are conditioned, they are coexisting. The subject is coexisting with object, object is coexisting with subject. But this whole game of subject, object, where it is going on? In the mind. Can mind exist without the conscious self? No. It is dependent. So, mind does not exist by itself. It is dependent. How can something that which is dependent come to know that which it is dependent on? How can it come to know what is its source? Effect can never come to know the source, the cause. These are basic principles. Effect can never come to know the cause. The mind can never come to know its origin. It can, it can make an effort to go back to it, but on the journey it will vanish. The wave can make a journey to go back to the water, but on the way it will vanish. The salt doll will jump into the ocean to see how deep is the ocean, but the salt doll will merge into the whole ocean, it will lose its uh, uh, identity. The identity is not in the self, identity is in the mind. I am a man, I am a woman, I am so many years old, I am a father, I am a brother, I am a husband, etc, etc. Whatever identity you have about yourself, including I am a seeker, including I am a meditator, all these identities are only in the mind. Why we are speaking like this? Because we are doing Agnana Khandana. We are denying the possibility of ignorance. If ignorance is not there, then what is there? There is only truth. Then mind will also be truth. Uh, we have to come to that point. <laughs> But you will not come to that point that everything is the reality till you don't complete your knowledge. 
Ignorance is incomplete knowledge. Self is complete knowledge. Unless you don't be the complete knowledge, you will not understand that there is nothing called incomplete knowledge. Meaning, there is nothing called the mind. You are understanding the logic. Therefore, to say that inert ignorance, another good word, jada, agyan. Agyan by nature is jada. Ignorance by nature is inert. How do you know? Through its effects. <laughs> What is the effect? Ahamenidam. Both are coming and going. Whatever is coming and going is inert. Ignorance also goes away after some time, isn't it? For realized people, ignorance is gone. Or at a worldly level, what I don't know, I don't know what is behind me. Then I turn, ignorance of what is behind me is gone. So that which only existed for a certain period of time and afterwards goes away, has to be inert by nature. And naturally, its expressions will also be inert, which is thoughts. So, what is the conclusion? Thought knowledge is inert. <laughs> Keep connecting. Thought knowledge is inert. Thought knowledge is incomplete knowledge. Thought knowledge is an expression of ignorance. It can never come to know what the reality is. Therefore, to say that inert ignorance knows itself is a contradiction in terms. So it, and this is the contradiction. We are studying words. We are collecting thoughts. Thinking by studying this scripture, listening, reading the words of the master. Nyaneshwar Maharaj and Swamiji, we will become enlightened, we will become come closer to ourselves. Somewhere it will click. And that is good, that faith is required. That faith is required. But the books cannot make you, they cannot catch your neck. Or cannot catch your collar and say, no, be subjective. Only you can be subjective. Nobody can make you be that subjective person. So in all this analysis, sometimes from the point of view of you have to, you, you are not this, you are not this. Then from the other standpoint that you are this, you have, if we are studying by our mind creating convictions, new understandings. And what is that understanding? That understanding is saying that no understanding can ever make you realize. <laughs> Contradiction, no? First was the understanding of I am a person, I am the part of this world I was born. I, now you have come to understand, you have come to your mind. You have left all that outside. You come and you are interested in the scriptures. You are interested in knowing the self through the scriptures. You have come in the presence of teachers and masters. And they are saying, mind cannot take you there. And yet they say, Abhyas hai no dukandaya. Continue studying. <laughs> they say studying cannot take you to the truth, but they say keep studying. Contradiction, no? This is what is told here that therefore to say that inert ignorance knows itself, itself is a contradiction in terms. Instead of arguing about such contradictory statements, this was a contradictory statement just now what I made, said. Because our empirical, uh, our, our relative uh, experience is only by way of mind. And mind 
by nature is full of contradictions. Wherever there are opposites, there will be contradictions. Nothing will be seamless, continuous. So instead of arguing about such contradictory statements, these contradictory statements in the scriptures, meaning in the Upanishad, such contradictory statements in the Upanishads, they are resolved in the Brahma Sutra. We are doing it as we are going along. I have just explained to you, but much more in detail uh, is given in the Brahma Sutras. It's very, very, very hair splitting logic. You cannot study Brahma Sutras. Uh, uh, oh, I'm going to study. If you have not understood this part, then you cannot, you are not qualified to study that all. Brahma Sutra. It is better to keep silent. But this, you know, this coming to silence will dawn. You have to realize as a seeker that whatever amount of thoughts I may harbor in my mind, they may be sattvic thoughts, they may be sattvic contemplations, they, they, I am absolutely single pointed, I am sitting in meditation, I am going into samadhi, nirvikalpa samadhi. If this dialogue is going on in your mind, you are not there. We get euphoria, we get ecstatic or we get afraid when the mind is becoming silent. And that is why I want to keep engaging with the, with, with the thoughts. To engage with the thoughts, either you go into your memory or you go into your senses and through the senses you interact with the world and keep uh, engaging with the world. This is what we are doing on a daily basis. This has to, this, this, this uh, attachment to the world, this attachment to the memories has to be given up and you have to become clear that my mind is not, till it doesn't click, that the mind is incapable of presenting the reality that I am on a platter, till then you will keep searching outside. Till then you will keep searching in the books. Till then we will keep searching in the experiences. But the day it clicks that the mind is incapable of uh, delivering the self through thinking, which is the platter of thinking, <laughs> that day automatically silence. That moment, not day, that moment when it clicks and it can click many times during the day. Then it is a healthy silence. When it is forced through yoga, pranayama, pratyahar, dharana, dhyana, that is unnatural silence. But because we don't know how not to do, so we practice that. Here also we are doing talking only, no? So what is this going on? This is a one and a half hours of dharana. This is, this can be for each one of you. This can be a one and a half hours of dharana. Dharana means you are focused on one thought, on one idea, on one uh, theme with few distractions. 
सो अवर थीम इज वॉट इज अवर थीम द बुक नो इज अवर थीम द वर्ड्स इन द बुक नो इज अवर थीम अज्ञान खंडना नो इज अवर थीम द वर्ड्स डी वैल्यूड नो the various chapters in no what is our theme our theme is to be and because we think that we are not <laughs> and therefore we want to be now for this one and a half hours we are engaging with words different words what are these different words distractions but while these words are coming to you every now and then you will you will just be with yourself because you are always but at times suddenly it dawns suddenly it pulls you pulls the mind in see and if you can stay with that and allow the listening to go on without being the becoming the listener you are in dhyan see for both dharana and dhyan you need a loci you need a locus point that locus point can be the aham that can be the i thought that i thought is being and you know that i thought cannot come to know, is not equal to true i but we have to focus on something if i focus on the world i will have many thoughts if i focus on i i will wean away from all the objective thoughts when i come to the i i am in dharana dhyan so for one and a half hours continuously in spite of the words our attention is brought again and again to the i that you are open eyed meditation see but it must happen naturally it must not happen as a as a force as a, a, a our our and it will not happen as a forceful withdrawal only if we have lived our 23 and a half hours in the world in the correct manner in continuous contemplation not getting attached anywhere not in people not in food not in positions not in memories not in convictions not in future expectations not in fears not in desires we are living a we are attempting to live a life of poise throughout the day then somewhere during that day the inner pull will come or when you come to the class bang it just clicks if it has not clicked one day it is going to click and this idea that it is going to click is only in the mind <laughs> because you are already clicked you are already the self only the mind needs to dissolve this insistence of the mind that i want to experience the self this all this idea also has to dissolve because mind can never experience the self once the realization happens there is no one to say i am realized because mind is no longer there after that other people see it but the one who is realized he is everything the wave which has realized it is the infinite waters other people will say oh see that another wave but where is the wave 
the waveness has vanished and instead the infinite water is expressing and what is the disposition of infinite waters i am all that there is so there is no indiv- no no acceptance or there is no need to accept all the waves no need to discard any wave because i am all that there is ekamaiva dvitiya so it is better to keep silent a point must come and every day we are we back we get rejuvenated only when we become silent in sleep so what will be the ultimate rejuvenation nourishment when we are silent like in sleep but we are awake the mind is silent and we are awake try to recreate that condition while while being awake because data is there with us that without sleep we cannot get refreshed how can i remain refreshed forever and ever and ever and ever bring it about for that you have we have to live the day correctly for that i have to live not an extroverted life i have to live an introverted life for that i don't i i can't continue to live a desire oriented life then there is only one that i am the witness of all the desires i am not going to interfere them i am not going to uh, willfully control let them let them undo themselves just like when we go to sleep all the desires in our mind undo themselves by themselves why desire gets power only when you give attention your attention you are not available to the desire you are available to your poise you are available to your conscious self conscious principle that is throbbing within your heart because those who talk like this are only operating in the field of ignorance they want to hold on to the point of view of ignorance and not lift themselves to the height of pure consciousness this is this line exactly what i have been explaining for last 15 minutes what is that those who talk like this what is talk like this be silent as if in silence you the self is uh, available and in uh, while talking the self is not available no self is available whether you are talk, whether mind is thinking or mind is not thinking self is constant whether the mind is expressing as waking and dream or the mind is uh, zero in sleep self is always self is 100% available everywhere and i am that then why am i not experience because you are living only one third of life the waking you're not taking your complete experience into consideration and then assessing if you start assessing i am i the waker or the dreamer or the sleeper why am i living only why am i taking only the waking as comp- as the real experience if i am taking that real i should take the other two real sleep also real and dream also real but i don't do that and if i take them as a illusion then i should take waking also an illusion that also i don't do contradiction see we are split once you start analyzing are tere ke kya bewakoof bana diya maine aapko because there is no solution to this thinking <laughs> and when you think deeply suddenly you find yourself separate you find yourself you are the substratum you find that you are the unchanging one they want to hold on to the point of view of ignorance and not lift themselves to the height of pure consciousness this is the vision that sant nyaneshwara uh, nyana deva is repeatedly emphasizing on in this chapter 
the more we fix the mind on the thought that because of the pure consciousness every experience is possible the more we will be able to get away from the realm of relativity this is what we saw in the chapter 6th of the bhagavad gita what did it say there it was told resigning mentally all works to me and making me your goal resorting to buddhi yoga keep your mind constantly on me remember that so but where is our mind our mind is on understanding or not understanding at this moment our mind is oh these words are creating too much confusion for an unprepared one it, if they have just come in new, too much confusion for another person these are too many words uh, it's not leading anywhere it's good thought but one must not get frustrated instead of frustration and uh, frustration is in the mind because mind is trying to work it out and it can never work it out it will lead to frustration instead of getting into frustration use that energy the energy that is released as a result of frustration <laughs> use it to fall back into yourself the more we fix the mind on the thought that because of the pure consciousness when it is not like this see one is, the reality is nirgun nirakar and the reality is sagun sakar sagun sakar is the phenomena nirgun nirakar is the absolute these are the two aspects we have taken we have taken the sagun sakar which is the changing form we have taken that as the reality without seeing it from the point of view of the absolute from what point are we seeing the sagun world the name and form of the world of name and form from individual standpoint and from individual standpoint you are going to be frustrated only and for that purpose it is that verse which i just read which we did last week in uh, gnaneshwari so you expand yourself you raise yourself you raise your consciousness in instead of individual consciousness you be the infinite consciousness yesterday in adhyatma ramayana also the same thought which one are you there it was told the expression of consciousness through the pancha koshas is it cannot be stopped the ex, the reflection of the sun in a bucket of water cannot be stopped it will happen if the bucket what water comes the sun will reflect in it you cannot cannot say i am not i don't want the sun to reflect i'm going to throw out the reflected sun you cannot do it question is you are the reflected sun the life is the reality is expressing through this bucket in the waters of the mind are you identified with the bucket or are you uh, is and your or your attention is on the original that is the difference if your attention is on the bucket it leads to egoism so what is individ individuality individuality is not egoism it is a principle individuality is reflection of consciousness through the equipments is called individuality when that individuality is identified with the conditionings it is called ego if that if that reflection 
is contemplating on its original source. If it is not identified, it is the witnessing consciousness. And, we, and when it comes to this, uh, when its attention is whose reflection am I am, then it is the original. When we don't understand this, okay, then we bring God principle in between. Because it helps us. It helps because we are not able to contemplate on ourselves without name and form. That's why. So here when he says, the more we fix our mind on the thought that because of pure consciousness, every experience is possible. Because of the consciousness that I am, every con con experience is possible. Now take another uh, tangent, which is correct assessment, which when you listen to it, because of pure consciousness, pure consciousness is the substratum. And what is mind? Mind is also nothing but consciousness. Then why don't we call mind consciousness? No, we call it consciousness with thoughts. Just like when we see a, 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 a big lake, the breeze begins, some part of the lake has waves, another part of the wave has is completely calm. No wave less. So where there is no waves, we see the water. Where there is waves, we don't say the water. We say, see how many waves are coming there? How many ripples are there? Where there is no wave, there the water is still calm, reflecting everything that is around it. Mountain, sun, moon, whatever. But wherever there is wave, where, where we can see such a lake, go to Pangso, Pengangso. Half side is Chinese, half side is Indian in the Himalayas. Or go to Mansarur, those who have come with me to Mansarur, you have seen, many times we have seen that. Suddenly a breeze comes from far away, we can see the waves coming, but close by, it is absolutely calm. Till that, Till those waves don't come closer to us. But everything is water. Similarly, consciousness, pure consciousness or, or, or is pure consciousness. And wherever in pure consciousness there are there, there are thoughts, that area, that consciousness is called as mind. In the mind, the seeker is, the identity of the seeker is. When the seeker comes to this conviction and starts living, that every experience is possible because of pure consciousness, that is my true nature, that is who I am in essence. Slowly, slowly, that will become your direct experience. For some it happens click in one go, for some it takes a, a gradual process. And you see that in life also. Sometimes things suddenly click to you in one go. Sometimes you have to think about it again and again and again till it clicks. Sometimes in the one glass, one, one glass of water is enough to quench your thirst. Sometimes you have to keep two, three glasses to quench your thirst. Why? Sometimes like this. Why sometimes like that? Sometimes we remember, want to remember something. Immediately it comes. 
समटाइम्स वी हैव टू कीप थिंकिंग अरे यार क्या था वो अरे क्या था क्या था क्या था देन स्लोली इट कम्स दिस इज हाउ द माइंड इज वॉट कैन यू बट बिकॉज द माइंड इज लाइक दैट यू स्टार्ट कंसिडरिंग आई एम ऑल्सो लाइक दैट गॉन लॉस द प्लॉट Our attention should be because of consciousness. All expressions are, all experiences are. Whichever way the uh, consciousness wants, the way that way it is happening. If when we don't understand that, it's all Lord's will. Like when we read the story of Papa Ramdas in quest of God, he did not get for food for four days. He says it's the Lord's wish. Maybe there is some impurity, so he wants me to purify. And if he had lot of food, then he didn't say that. Okay, you have given me food. I will gobble up like a bakasur. He said, Oh, so you have given me so much food to see if I think of food or I think of you. And he continues thinking of the Lord. <laughs> see the maja. what is our orientation so either we think that i am the con- the consciousness that there is which is infinite it alone is the basis of all experiences if that is not clicking under understanding is not there then is the ishwara he is the material cause and the efficient cause he is making every thought come maintain and go he is making every experience before the experience he is there during the experience the lord is there after the experience the lord is there the result whatever is coming that is also the lord the effort is also the lord the confusion is also the lord the clarity is also the lord your then what happens instead of your attention on being the mind your attention is on the lord and lord is complete lord is all knowledgeable he knows who he is that will when you identify with someone like that then slowly slowly those qualities those abilities that 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 uh, what the lord stands for that starts expressing through you also because you have uh, chosen to contemplate on him than on anything else so therefore masters they know themselves nyaneshwar maharaj knows himself yet nivritti nath who is his elder brother guru maharaj goes on vari goes to pandarpur has the darshan of vithala because he is going to vithala pandarpur does not mean that he has stopped being the self that condition was of namdev not of nyaneshwar maharaj Namdev Maharaj is completely established in the self. Namdev Maharaj was completely surrendered to the Lord, but was still. What was missing in Namdev Maharaj? The realization that the Lord to whom he surrendered is none other than the self. That link was missing in Namdev Maharaj. you getting what we are saying and this does not come through this understanding does not come through mind it happens by grace but we have to our orientation must we must be thinking about grace then it will flow <laughs> oh wonderful the more we fix the mind on the thought that because of pure consciousness every experience is possible under another way of putting it what is an experience i am asking this question what is an experience something that comes and goes okay 
so it because of pure consciousness everything that is coming and going is possible so where is this coming and going taking place mind mind in the consciousness only right put, put it in another way what is an experience the feeling of uh, that something outside me is a uh... Um, it's happening good so now let's te technicalize it something outside me something outside me is an object isn't it and i is the subject so what how is an experience possible so what are the main ingredients of a experience there must be a subject there must be an object there must be an instrument of knowledge in other words triputi is required for every experience there must be an experiencer the subject there must be an experienced object object that is the object and there must be an experience which is taking place and where is it taking place in the mind and what are we saying because of pure consciousness every experience is possible is every thought not an experience of yours is it or is it not yes swami ji yeah. thought is always about a, an object yes a, a thought itself is an object <laughs> we know the thought is, we know the thought these four words are don't you know that they came to your mind and went away then when we go into each word then we realize that there is a subject object and instrument of knowledge also you're dissecting 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 so what is an experience what what does it involve there is an experiencer there is an experienced object and there is experiencing triputi so every triputi every triad is happening what is the material which has gone into the triad nothing but pure consciousness where is the triad taking place in the mind what is the mind nothing but pure consciousness right so our attention instead of on the experience it goes to the source of experience what is the substratum and if that ability is not there it goes bring the lord in between and there is no difference between the self and the ishwara <laughs> is one and the same the more we fix the mind on the thought that because of the pure consciousness every experience is possible the more we will be able to get away from the realm of relativity the more our attention goes to the constant principle the substratum on which these triads are coming and going the experiences are coming and going to that extent we will be weaned away from the relativity this is exactly what is happening in the sleep also there you are not thinking of the conscious principle but there you are thinking of silence and what happens without your trying all the noise all the activity all the objectivity of the waking and the dream subsides isn't it automatically you don't have to do anything all you did was focused on silence which you call as sleep out of ignorance now instead of calling it sleep call it pure consciousness <laughs> and allow the world to the, uh, the all the objectivity to undo itself all the relativity to dissolve 
don't try to dissolve it when you try to dissolve it you are a, 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 a yogi in the sense a willful yogi here we are not trying anything willfully we are here we are just trying to shift the attention shift the attention from the objective experience to the subjective constant only shift your attention let the ears listen to the words let the eyes see the colors and forms let the nose breathe and smell but you be the constant the unchanging one shift your attention they are going to do what they have to do anyway if the eyes are open they will something will be seen why you want to worry about it how ignorance cannot exist to or no itself is stated further in the next ov how ignorance cannot exist or no itself is stated further we have already explained but <laughs> nyaneshwar maharaj is trying to make sure that we never ever again come back to this subject <laughs> of ignorance he is uh, removing it from the root looking at it from all different angles and showing that there is nothing like ignorance ever existing it's all the reality the reality the reality aani janati vastu ek tene agnyane ki je murkh tai agnyan he lekh kavana dhari and if knowledge that is self we are not talking about mind knowledge or thought knowledge and if knowledge the self itself is made to appear ignorant by the ignorance how beautifully he says is made to appear ignorant by the ignorance so ignorance is making the pure consciousness appear as broken consciousness what is the broken consciousness waking dream deep sleep what is the broken consciousness every thought is a broken consciousness subject object aham idam one thought sec and uh, the instrument of knowledge then second thought again aham idam then third thought again ahavidam what do you say when you go to the ocean see there is another wave coming oh there is another wave coming you don't say water is coming you say wave is coming water is water so what is making the water appear as wave and we have taken wave as reality and forgotten the water <laughs> same thing is happening with us it is the ignorance which is making uh, the reality the atmic self appear ignorant so who are you are you the ignorant self or are you the actual self the uh, the 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 atmic self so if you say no i am the ignorant self because i don't know the reality who is who is making you believe that you are that the ignorance what is its expression the mind so decide are you the mind or are you that one in whose presence the mind is coming and going mind is coming and going in other words the experiences or the thoughts or the waking and dream they are coming and going <clears throat> Ana 
मजेदार द रियालिटी द आत्मिक सेल्फ इज मेड टू अपियर इग्नोरेंट बाय द इग्नोरेंस इट सेल्फ एंड दैट इग्नोरेंस इज वेर duality is that is the mind so mind is making the self appear as the ignorant self what is that ignorant self the jiva what is that ignorant self whichever way you take yourself to be that i am born i am going to die ignorant self that i have a past and future ignorant self that i am a father mother daughter sister and ignorant self that i am a man ignorant a woman ignorant self that i have got panch koshas ignorant self that i am not realized i want to realize ignorant self pagal ho jaoge yaar everything that i am thinking is ignorant self only yes <laughs> any identity or role you take in life it is the expression of ignorance superimposed on the reality or it is making the reality appear as that relativity relative is that which comes and goes reality is that which never comes and goes decide which one are we are we the one which come who comes and goes or are we the one who is never coming and going even if you take this one thought everything will undo itself the knower or consciousness knowing the ignorance is one without a second the absence also is known the ignorance i don't know that who knows this i don't know that whatever it may be i don't know god who knows that this statement came and went that is the knower that is the pure consciousness in whose presence that thought came and went the knower or conscious knowing the ignorance is one without a second this being so if one says that this pure consciousness which is the nature of pure knowledge is covered by ignorance and behaves like an ignorant then who knows this ignorance if you say very simple if you say the clouds are covering the sun the clouds are covering the sun or the eclipse has taken place how do you know only in the light of sun you are able to see the clouds covering the sun isn't it or the eclipse taking place exactly the same way it is only in the light of consciousness that is why that is your, your true being the pure consciousness or pure knowledge is covered by ignorance and behaves like an ignorant then who knows this ignorance you are the knower behaving as if you are not the knower you are the constant one behaving as if you are not the constant one you are the substratum behaving as if you are not the substratum you are the man or the woman 
behaving as the father daughter husband son do- wife all the problems are for the non entity for the ghost which these roles are man or woman has got no problem but what do we take reality we forget that we are the man or the woman and we take the roles to be most important and where are the roles existing in in their own absence superimposed on the man or the woman see now take this example and apply on yourself from the man you go back to the self on the self all triputis are superimposed when you take the triputis to be real you identify with them then who is miserable the ego where is ego not existing <laughs> where is husband not existing it's only with because you have taken wife to be real so husband is there you have i have not wife as real you have identified with wife therefore husband is there you identify with yourself that there is nothing to identify with i am all that there is all identification identification basic necessity in identification is there should be two only then identification is possible two inert objects cannot identify with each other there must be someone conscious someone conscious and some, and other can be conscious or inert so there has to be a subject the subject will get identified with inert object or a conscious per, per, person but two are required are you two or are you one and on that one these all the dualities all the roles all the referential existence all the specificity all the incomplete knowledge is superimposed just like all the waves are superimposed on the water all the ornaments are superimposed on the gold it is nothing but gold but our attention is not on the gold our attention is on the usefulness our attention is on utility get out of it if i sleep the whole day then my day will be lost there there is nothing to be lost there is nothing to be gained give it a go sleep for 3 4 days continuously see find out what happens or don't sleep for 4 days 2 3 days why am i lost in this sleep and waking sleep and waking i am the constant one okay i will not sleep give it a go experiment with yourself remain awake push see how how to what limit you can go but here we are not talking about experiment that will be again willful here we are talking about just recognizing what that that uh that if one says that this pure consciousness which is the nature of the pure knowledge is covered by ignorance and behaves like an ignorant then who knows this ignorance i only know the ignorance there is not someone coming from outside and saying hey this is ignorant i know even when we teach you the scriptures or i am teaching my mind even while i am teaching it talking about it many things click are i didn't know that who who said that i didn't know that i only know <laughs> if you are hearing it it's not that knowledge is coming from me from me what is coming to you words 
and realization that I didn't know that this is uh, now I clarity has come. So before I was ignorant, now I become knowledge knowledgeable. Who knows that you only? You're not in a hospital where uh, you can't eat and you're on a drip. But even if you are on a drip, the, the, the body has to take it in and nourish itself with that. So words are the drip coming to you. You have to nourish yourself by being subjective. If it is the Atman, then how can the Atman behave like an ignorant? If I am the one who knows every Triputi, every triad, if I am the Atman or I am the one at this moment who knows every thought is coming and going, if I am the one who was knowing the ignorance and now that ignorance is gone and knowledge has come, if I am that constant self, if I am the true knower of all coming and going, then why am I behaving like an ignorant one? Then why am I behaving as if I am a man, I am a father, I am a mother, I am a sister, I am a doctor, I am a uh, sannyasi, I am a speaker, I am a listener. Get out of all that. Let all that happen, but don't give attention to it. You be attentive of the self in the poise of the self. Be the poise. Undisturbed by what is coming and going. Supporting all coming and going. But not succumbing to any coming and going. Succumbing will mean becoming a slave of what is coming and going. Realized masters are not like that. If it is the Atman, then how can the Atman behave like an ignorant? How can? If we are the Atman by nature, then how can we be ignorant? Atman is of the nature of light. How can sun become dark? It is. It can never become dark. It is of the nature of light. It is of the nature of light. You are of the nature. You are of the nature of knowledge. Knowledge is equal to Atman. Is equal to pure self. Is equal to reality. Is equal to pure consciousness. Whatever words you want to give. How can you be ignorant? So you are hoodwinking yourself. I don't know anything. I am. A, I don't have any knowledge. I am a, absolutely ignorant. It is by your grace that uh, we have come to know everything. It is by your grace that our journey is going on. It is by your grace that this uh, uh, stop this. But don't allow arrogance to come in. <laughs> Be confident, but no arrogance. Nyaneshwar Maharaj is also saying, it is only by the grace of my Guru Maharaj Nivrittina that I am able to speak. But what is his disposition? This is his disposition. That saying that doesn't make him less. He continues to maintain his position of reality, which is all that there is. At the phenomenal level, this is going on.
when the attention is on the pure consciousness thereafter there cannot be excessive influence of the body identification hmm? when our attention when we are continuously attentive of the pure consciousness which cannot be thought about because you are that remember eyes cannot see the eyes but they are there they cannot illumine they can illumine the whole world but they cannot illuminate themselves similarly i can know all the thoughts but the i thought cannot come to know i <laughs> same way here when the attention is on the pure consciousness come to that point come to that poise there cannot be excessive influence of body identification such a person slowly slowly withdraws from the activities at the at, at the platform of the body from the platform of the body what is the platform of the body now don't misunderstand when we say body does not mean only the physical body it is the body breath mind intellect what is the what is the what happens at the platform called the physical body heat cold comfort discomfort does not matter to you anymore at the platform of the breath what is the what happens there hunger and thirst that does not affect you anymore does not influence you anymore at the level, at the platform of the mind the sukha dukha joys and sorrows likes and dislikes which lead to joys and sorrows you are immune to that also because you are not available someone has to be available for joys and sorrows to express no i am joyful i am miserable that i itself is missing <laughs> because he is not giving attention to them there is no receiver and same way at the intellectual level on the platform of intellect the honor dishonor praise and insult we become immune to that because we are not available see if it doesn't happen in one go our life should be organized our thinking must be organized so that every day we are moving towards that we are weaning away from comfort discomfort heat and cold hunger and thirst but our job is every day yeah yeah that was fantastic next day oh why didn't you well, today the dosa has become very soft i wanted it crispy gaya kaam se sara immediately sabotage the entire satsang one thought not that you have to be afraid of that thought but find out where are we going wrong it is our outward orientation it is our that that we miss the chance every moment there is a chance either we are attentive of the world or we are attentive of the constant one come to the pure consciousness that i that you are when the attention is on the pure consciousness thereafter there cannot be excessive influence of the body identification i have told you what the influence of the body at the panch four koshas i told you therefore nyaneshwar maharaj is coaxing us to quit the relative standpoint and look at the world from the divine perspective he has been doing that from chapter 1 onwards <laughs> 
थ्रू शिव शक्ति समावेश थ्रू गुरु स्तवन थ्रू वैखरी मध्यमा पश्यंति परा थ्रू वर्ड्स डी वैल्यूड फ्रॉम सच्चिदानंद हाउ दे आर दीज थ्री वर्ड्स आर ओनली देर टू चेकमेट असत अचित एंड दुखम एंड नाउ टू अज्ञान खंडन दैट देर इज नथिंग कॉल्ड इग्नोरेंस ओनली द सेल्फ इज ओनली द रियालिटी इज एंड दैट आई एम at any given moment don't give heed to anything else other than pure consciousness therefore nyaneshwar maharaj is coaxing us to quit the relative standpoint and look at the world from the divine perspective and this is what i keep saying live at general principle level when you come to general principle general principle is uh, uh, is applicable to everyone it is not individual specific vision is general principle hunger is general principle everyone gets hunger no it is my hunger i want this only to eat gone panch koshas is a general principle find out what are the rules of engagement fire burns it's a general principle what can you do about it no i i don't think i don't believe it i am going to put my hand into it without having proper preparation if you put you will get burned then what do you do learn to negotiate with it so that you don't get burned learn to negotiate through the panchakoshas so that you don't get enslaved by the panchakoshas Nego- negotiate through the roles that you are playing so that you do not succumb to becoming the role then there is freedom and there's no insistence if we are insisting i am a father i am a mother i am a man i am a woman why don't you insist that i am a pure consciousness if insisting is your habit then why don't you insist something positive and if you keep thinking i am the pure consciousness it will be as foolish that i am pure conscious i am pure conscious by repeating nothing is going to happen then you have to see how what is the disposition of pure consciousness with reference to everything and that is what we are seeing that everything has got no it does, it's existing in its own absence there is only pure consciousness what will be the god's position with reference to everything it is the upadan and the nimitta karan that is for god but that god is not other than the self then how i am supporting everything and not affected by everything come to this conclusion when in the ninth chapter bhagwan says all the whole creation is in me i am in the whole creation then he says neither the creation in, is in me nor i am in the creation yet nothing is there yet i support the whole creation and i am transcendental to it that is your position also Consci- i am the consciousness consciousness is uh, uh, supporting the mind and the no mind and what is the position of the mind existing in its own absence <laughs> and yet the phenomena is going on so i am supporting the phenomena because without me the phenomena cannot express but i am transcendental to the phenomena who me as the consciousness now take that position and move through the world 
then there is no question of becoming anything. Everything will happen, whatever is meant to happen. But your attention is on the infinite principle, the pure consciousness that I am. This is where every master is. This is where Ishwara is also. This is where you are also at this very moment. But as if making believe that we are ignorant. Then no situation will pose a problem. Krishna, Krishna Bhagwan, Shri Krishna, he was ever in that position. But in his life, so many difficulties came. In Ramchandra Ji's life, so many difficulties came. They went through it with an equanimity. Ramchandra Ji was a bit on the Gambhir side, on a serious side. <laughs> when Krishna, smilingly, he just brushed everything away. Allowed the solution to appear. Solution will appear when you are not hooked into the problem. When you take the position that problem is existing in its own absence, then the, if, it, if the problem has come about, then the solution will also come about. Keep smiling. But if you take a position, why all the problems are only coming to me? Gone. Solution will stop coming. <laughs> then only problems will come. Therefore, our Swamiji says, wherever the question is coming from, answer is also there. If questions have come from inside, the answers are also there from inside. Be, be available to them. And who are you? You are beyond question and answers. Question and answers are only in the mind. If mind has the capacity to pop up questions, it also has the capacity to pop up the answers. Watch the game. Watch the game without diluting yourself by taking a role. Be the conscious principle. Then no situation will pose as a problem. Therefore, there is no reason to call ignorance as ignorance. There is no reason to call ignorance as ignorance. Everything is that reality alone. This is the transformation of the vision that has come about now. Because if you say ignorance is and I am not affected by the ignorance, you are still talking with the, with the hat of ignorance on your head. <laughs> From sun's point of view, there is no darkness possible. From consciousness point of view, there is no ignorance possible. Everything is self. Self alone is. I can't even use the word everything. Self alone is. Vibhu, all pervasive. There is no place that it is not. There is no time that it is not. In fact, from the self point of view, there is no time, space and objectivity. Because time, space and objectivity is an expression of the phenomena. And the, and the, and the definition of phenomena is that which exists in its own absence. Therefore, there is no reason to call ignorance as ignorance because even though ignorance is covering the Atman, the Atman is still very much in command as the knower of ignorance. That is our position. That even though, the this is our understanding at intellectual level, that even if we are subjective, it will click right now. Go word by word. Because even though ignorance is covering the Atman, even though the mind which is full of, which is nothing but duality, is covering the Atman, which is covering the original self, the reality, the constant principle, 
द आत्मन इज स्टिल स्टिल वेरी मच इन कमांड एज द नोअर ऑफ इग्नोरेंस इट इज अवर पोजिशन राइट नाउ येस वी लूज द प्लॉट बाय गिविंग आइडेंटिफाइंग विथ द माइंड बट एट एनी गिवन मोमेंट through scriptures through teacher by grace you are told that do you know that the thoughts are coming and going in your mind yes that means you are other than the mind yes so you know no i don't know <laughs> See? for one moment you know but then you try hard again you don't know <laughs> it's not a question of trying so it is in your presence that the relative what is the relative presence and absence what is the relative manifestation non manifestation what is the relative Th thought knowledge or presence of knowledge by way of thoughts and absence of knowledge by way of thoughts want to take it in a total perspective waking and dream is the knowledge deep sleep is ignorance who knows you know no be that so are you the ignorant one or are you the knower the ultimate knower if you are the ultimate knower from the ultimate pure consciousness absolute pure consciousness ignorance is not possible just as from the sun's point of view darkness is not possible from the water's point of view waves are not possible from the gold's point of view ornaments are not possible take the correct position take the correct position this obsession with the ignorance that i don't know i don't know i don't know nowadays children only speak like that what do you want to do i don't know do you know how to make tea i don't know do you know how to make pizza i don't know what are you going after i go i don't know i don't know nowadays they don't even say i don't know hmm? <laughs> they just shrug their shoulders come you are not the i don't know mind is let the mind be in that it's good it will come to silence you be the knower with this we'll conclude mm -hmm. thank you for allowing me to share these thoughts expand what swami ji and nyaneshwar maharaj have written it was absolutely maja aa gaya aanand aa gaya aaj om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate शाति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ सिट क्वाइटली फॉर अ मोमेंट
हरिओम